Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. Yesterday, I had a little free time and I was kind of Rick Beatoing my way through the new Billie Eilish album. And uh, there's some wonderful material there. It's, it's a mature and just very listenable album, highly recommended. So I came upon Wildflower, which really jumped out at me. It's got a great use quarterly of modal mixture. It's uh, it's just terrific lyrics. It feels very personal. And melodically, it uses some of the same ideas we've been talking about. The use of uh, chord tone extensions and surprising notes to create uh, tension and propulsion and real emotion. I just Let's take a look at it today. Well, uh, Wildflower is just one of a bunch of really great songs on this album. And, you know, just because I don't want Universal Music Group to come after me, I'm, I'm not going to play it. But uh, so I'm playing through this and I realize it's in uh, kind of like F sharp minor or D major. And of course, D major is seven right here. <laughs> That's not really the sound though. What I realized was I had to go grab my capo and capo at two. And when I did that, I got the C major seven shape to be the D major seven that I needed. So D major seven, like a C major seven shape, B minor seven. So clearly what's just happened is flat six minor five to this F sharp minor, which of course looks like an E minor. Now I'm just gonna say the, the transposed shapes. That's C major seven, B minor seven, E minor seven, or E minor. Sometimes it's minor seven. Well, it's so beautiful, right? And I just love the major seven. It's giving me sort of Seals and Croft 70s vibes. That's the verse. Really, that's kind of what happens. And the major seven is going to be important. You'll see about it in the melody. The chord, and I, I keep showing this to you on guitar because I know people who click on this video are going to go like, I want to play the guitar part. So C major seven, actually, it's D major seven. Up a whole step. It's E. It looks like a D shape here. And it feels like it wants to go there, right? Major, but no. What happens next is what makes this song great in my mind. Because remember, we've had this B minor uh, seven shape here, the C sharp minor seven, actually. This time, however, what we get is a beautiful dominant chord pushing us to the minor. And that beautiful dominant chord is just, it just makes it it's so. And then this big push, it's dramatic, it's 70s. And then the bass walks down. So the bass walks down from F sharp to E to D. That is pretty much it. There's a little shift when you go into the final outro. Um, uh, the chord, there's chord substitution that happens. This is modal mixture. The use uh, the first time of what's essentially C sharp minor seven, and then in the chorus, C sharp dominant to push us more strongly to that minor chord resolution. Now let's look at it on the piano keyboard. And we're gonna go back into D here. Well, here we are at the keyboard. And the first chord is D major seven. Um, I've set our, our key signature in the key of A here, but really I think we're in F sharp minor. C sharp minor seven, F sharp minor. And sometimes we get an F sharp minor seven. Sometimes we hear that E in there. But what's the melody? Well, what's really interesting to me is how the melodic tones play with these chords. The first line, things fall apart. And time breaks your heart. It's the same phrase again and again. We saw that in very recently in the um, Coldplay song, uh, The Scientist, that we analyzed. The chord sounds, the melody sounds different depending on what chord it's over. There, but I know. So again and again. And time breaks your heart. I wasn't there, but I know. So those notes in the chord, what are they? I'll play them up an octave 
major third to the ninth, leap down to the A, and then we change to the C minor seven, just a little bit after the melody gets to the B. That's the minor seventh of C minor seven. And and I love this note. I wasn't there against the F sharp minor chord. You can see it's the 11th. If I put it down in here, you can see it's kind of jammed strangely into the chord. And then this beautiful moment, but I know this tone here against the D is just so sparky and beautiful. What is it? It's the sharp 11. Wow. Cool. And that's what makes me think that this is the scale. That use of that sharp 11. Well, that's just um, probably intuitive on Eilish's part, but it's the kind of melodic intuition that makes melodies sound great. The use of the seventh, the major seventh, the use of the sharp 11 to give us that sense of sort of uneasiness, how it really wants to push up. All right, let's go on to the pre-chorus. Um, she was crying on my shoulder, it's the major seven. That same phrase sounds different with all these chords. It's the same phrase on three different chords. Ah, it's just the same thing as that scientist trick that we saw earlier. Okay, I think what makes the chorus great is the dominant chord on the C sharp. Now, I'm just going to remind you what the chords are. But I see her, that's the D major 7, in the back of my mind. That's an E chord. And then the C sharp dominant to F sharp. And without the melody, it's not nearly as cool. And Eilish's vocal performances makes um, a whole meal out of that C-sharp dominant. All right, so the chorus melodically goes, but I see her, and that's major third, major seventh, right? In the back of my mind is on the E chord, A, the 11th down to the ninth mind, right? So cool, and then the seventh of E, and now it's time for the dominant chord. And what Eilish does is she kind of snakes her way up to the to the F sharp. Like that, except it's... You know, she kind of like bends her way up. And it's just the neatest thing. It's like the top of um, an F sharp harmonic minor scale. It's the classical music minor scale. And that same chord, that's that uh, C sharp minor chord, has appeared as a minor seven in the verse, and now it appears as a dominant chord to really push us strongly to the F sharp. It's such a sinuous and compelling sound, and it really just kind of moves us forward. Now, again, the question I guess we have to ask is how how like deliberate and conscious are these uh, choices for a top liner like Eilish? I think it's possible that it just sort of arises out of the an intuition of the moment and the relationship to the lyrics and stuff. But somebody wrote those chords. Somebody made the decision to use that clever modal mixture, minor seven in the verse, dominant in the chorus to make this song work. Well, listen, I don't want to take too much more time with this because I, I just, almost every song that you like has something in it for you. And your job as a composer, as a songwriter, as a musician, is to create a bag of things that you just recognize as valuable, as, as useful to you. When you hear something in a song that makes you spark, find out what it is. Well, I mean, this song totally caught my attention. Um, Wildflower. And that's a great, everything in the album is, is terrific. Uh, well, I hope this has been useful. <laughs> like and subscribe and ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do my videos and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.